Shalom Farana family, friends, and everyone tuning in. A very warm welcome to Farana Fellowship Online. Greetings in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ from my home to yours. It has been six months since our service at YMCA Stevens Road on the 11th of March, just before the circuit breaker. Since then, Foreigner Fellowship has gone online and released a total of 26 videos, of which three are chat rooms, one with a doctor, one with a businesswoman, and another with an ex-transgender turned pastor. We have had also two webinars, Stop Reacting and Start Responding, and Garments of Salvation. Just last week, we had our first Foreigner Fellowship Praise and Worship Together online via Zoom. We are humbled by what God is doing, rising beyond our circumstances. Allow me to read from 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 10 to 11. He gave His life for us so that we may share in resurrection life in union with Him, whether we are awake or asleep. Because of this, encourage the hearts of your fellow believers and support one another just as you have already been doing. If you have been blessed by our videos, we would love to hear your testimonies. Please find our contact information at www.forunderfellowshipsingapore.org. This week, we are pleased to have our sister, Evi Sondak, to share with us all. Let us prepare our hearts to listen and be blessed. Shalom Forano friends, it's an honor for me to be able to share with you today what God has put in my heart and has been teaching me in this season. See, what I'm about to share is what I have been receiving and learning. In the beginning of this year, on January 23rd, as I was praying with my prayer group, I saw a silhouette of a man standing, facing the horizon with a sword in his hand, and he was wielding it. It was sunset. As he was wielding it, the sword gives out light in the dark. So this thought came to me. Now, this is sunset. This is the time when the sun goes down and the sky was getting dark. Everything around us seems to become dimmer. So I thought to myself, are we facing dark times ahead? So in this vision, I saw the sword was glowing. The sword, as you all know, is the word. You know, it was illuminated only when wielded. So I believe that when we receive the revelation truth, the word will give us direction and strategy. So it is the word of God that gives out light in these dark times. This season, right through the decade, I believe that we need to go deeper in the Lord, to come up higher and to seek His face and receive from Him revelation truth. This is the decade when we need to stay alert and have the sword ready for use by continuously being connected with the Holy Spirit from, with, through worship and praying in tongues. This is the season for us to speak forth that revelation truth or the Rema word into our situations, into our family, for our health, for our work and ministry. This Rema word that we receive is the sword that brings light in every dark or broken situations in our lives. In Psalm 81 verse 10, Open your mouth wide with mighty decree. I will fill it now. You'll see the words that you speak, so shall it be. There are some of us in this season whose voice have been silenced by the enemy. As you know that this year in the Hebraic calendar is the year 5780. 80 is the number for pay which is the mouth. So this is the decade where we, as the children of God, are to speak out loud the prophetic word we, uh, we receive through dreams, through visions, through a Rema word, or even from hearing from the Lord. So in Psalm 81 verse 16, But I will feed you with my spiritual bread. You will feast and be satisfied with me, feeding on my revelation truth like honey, dripping from the cliffs, of the high place. See, when we feed on Revelation truth, the word says it's like honey. It gives us energy. It gives us life. For me personally, every time when I receive revelation from the Lord, it gives such satisfaction and comfort to my soul. 
to my emotions, to my thoughts, and it's like a, a thousand volts of electric jolt, you know, and that jump start my spirit, and it, it, it's very comforting for me. So, what do you do when you receive a revelation? When we receive a word, we need to pray it through to understand what the prophetic word means and how to apply the word to our situation. It's important that we ask God for wisdom so we know how to interpret and apply the revelation truth. It's good to have wisdom of the world, but without revelation from above, we will be limited to only the current space and time. So the twin revelation and wisdom, I believe, should go hand in hand. <clears throat> in the Bible, in Luke 5, Luke chapter 5, you know Simon Peter, he went out fishing all night and he got nothing. As you all know that Peter and a couple of his friends, they were all fishermen and fishing is their profession. So they understood the water, they knew when to catch fish, right? Because fishing is their profession. But yet they went out all night and they caught nothing. The next day when Jesus told Simon Peter, go back out into the deep waters to catch fish, Peter must be thinking, you know, I went all night and I couldn't, I caught nothing. But anyway, Nevertheless, Lord, by your word, you know, as he revealed to him the revelation truth, which is the word of Jesus himself, you know, he obeyed the Lord. He went out again to the deep waters, but this time he went out with the word of the Lord. And he let awesome. down the nets. As you all know the story, he caught so many fish that he needed his friend's boat to help. So in the end, two boats were filled with his fish. So before I go on further, I want to share what I learned about the enemy's devices. See, we don't want to focus on the enemy, but it's important that we are aware of his devices. So one of the devices used is to question on our identity. See, you can see that in Luke 4, Luke chapter 4, verse 3. How Satan questioned Jesus' identity in the wilderness when Jesus was fasting for 40 days. The tempter would come at the so-called right time when a person is hungry and ask Jesus, if you are really the Son of God, if you are really the Son of God, command this stone to turn into bread. So, you know, it's very important that we receive in our spirit the revelation of our identity as His sons and daughters. It is not enough if our understanding stays only as knowledge. We must know who we are in Christ whose we are, and who our Heavenly Father is to us. When we know our, our identity, then we no longer have to prove ourselves or try to gain acceptance or popular, popularity, and so on and so on. You know, The second device that second, Satan used is to question what God says to us. So the first device is questioning on our identity, and the second, he would question what God says to us. See, the enemy would plant seeds of doubt into our mind to question that revelation truth we receive. Usually, when there seems to be a delayed promise or when circumstances are just too difficult to bear, the voice of doubt gets louder and louder in your head. Did God really say that? In the Garden of Eden, in Genesis 3 verse 1, the serpent asked the woman, Did God really say to you that you must not eat the fruit from any of these trees in the garden? You see, the enemy knows how powerful we are as God's sons and daughters if we are to agree with heaven and declare his words. So, he will always try to silence our voices by launching attacks in our minds, in our emotions, planting doubts, and causing unpleasant situations to distract us from obeying and applying the word of God. See, this pandemic has caused so many people a lot of stress, you know, depression, feeling of hopelessness, fear and anxiety, health issues, financial difficulties and problems in relationships. You know, many of us have been discouraged because of the fierce attack of the enemy. Though we may be experiencing setbacks, you know, but know that these are only temporary. Yeah, the wilderness is not forever. God did not create us to be in the wilderness. It is to take us to the promised land. The setback is a setup for launching us into our destinies. See, I feel that it is very easy uh, for us to speak, you know, out of our emotions and fear when we are faced with situations. 
There are many times when the pain is just too much. When things get really rough, we can easily lose sight of our focal point, which is Jesus himself. See, he is the truth, he is the word, and he's our redeemer. So he is able to redeem us from our circumstances. You know, if our focus is not Christ as the redemptive one, then our view of life may be inferior. We may think differently from him from for every broken situation. So friends, it's absolutely necessary to stay connected with God's heart so that it will not be our own perception but that of God's. So don't give the devil opportunity to come in through an open door in any area of our lives because once he comes in, he will occupy that area. See, for example, when anxiety comes in, it will occupy our emotions and our thoughts with fear, worry, you know, unbelief, and we can get easily paralyzed by it. You see, fear is when you do not know the outcome or when you are uncertain of the future. Fear creeps in through the tiniest entry point in your armor and until it begins to destroy you from inside out. So fear causes you not only to feel hopeless because of the bleak future, it also causes you to see hopelessness Because the Bible says that fear is the opposite of faith. Faith sees hope. Fear sees hopelessness. So when surrounded by this great anxiety and fear, what must we do? Friends, we must quickly turn to the Lord for help. Don't let fear and anxiety take roots inside of us. You know, in Psalm 94 verse 19, Whenever my busy thoughts were out of control, the soothing comfort of your presence calmed me down and overwhelmed me with delight. I know that it's easier to agree with the word and to obey when everything is going well and when things are smooth sailing. But you know, we can easily miss the truth when we are in the midst of the storm. Distractions from circumstances, anxiety and fear in our hearts and negative mindsets, all this can cloud the truth. So friends, we need to always be sober and vigilant. In 1 Peter 5 verse 8, Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, walks about like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. So if the enemy is seeking whom he may devour, that means not everyone can be devoured. There are those that the devil cannot devour. Those who open themselves to allow fear and anxiety to rule over them are giving themselves to the enemy. So then, who are those people that cannot be devoured? These are the people who live in the Spirit, like in Romans 14 verse 17. The kingdom of God is not about eating and drinking, but is in the realm of the Holy Spirit filled with righteousness, peace, and joy. They are also those who are sober-minded and vigilant, who live in obedience to the word, who put on the full armor of God, and who align their thoughts and their hearts with the heart of the Father. Now, that doesn't mean that these people, there won't be any problem uh, against them. You know, though weapons may be formed against them, but as you all know, they will not be able to harm them. Amen? So if we are not alert in the spirit, and if we don't, and we continue to receive bad inputs, these bad inputs actually can plant seeds of doubts in our minds. Okay? They can shape our perception and weaken our prophetic decree. These seeds can also cause anxiety and fear in our hearts. When our hearts are full of fear or anxiety, our mouth will begin to declare the fruits of it. See, we may end up speaking words of discouragement, of complaints, and of negative words. Remember that life and death are in the power of our tongue. So any bad seeds that enter our minds, we have to quickly cast it out. You know, don't entertain them. The Bible says, resist the devil and he shall flee. You see, maybe unconsciously we may have allowed this garbage to uh, come in and occupy our hearts instead of the word of God. The Bible says that out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. So shouldn't our hearts be filled with God's words? So that when we are pressed on all sides, when tension comes, when faced with challenges, 
What comes out of our mouth is the word of God instead of our emotions or anything else other than the word of God. See, the word of God produces life, but that which produces the fruit of fear and worry are sinful in nature. In John 10, 10, Jesus said that he comes to give you life and life in abundance. So friends, we don't want to cancel our prayers by speaking negative words or speaking from unbelief. We learn from the Old Testament that the children of Israel, the generations that left Egypt, could not enter the Promised Land because of their murmurs and their unbeliefs. In Matthew 12, verse 36 to 37, he says, You are accountable for every careless word you say. Your very word is used as evidence against you, and your words will declare you innocent or guilty. Now, what should we do then if we have been speaking in opposition to the Word of God? For me, first I will return to the basic principle in the Bible, you know. Seek ye first, seek ye first the kingdom of God and all of His righteousness. And then repent and be washed by His blood and seek answers from the Lord. When we receive the Word from the Lord, obey the Word. Obedience is our part of the deal in the partnership with God. See, there are times when God works for us, but there are many times as we are maturing, He wants to work in us and through us. So obedience means that we have to align our emotions and our thoughts with the Word of God. If, for example, the word that we receive is to forgive, then no matter the pain or how we feel, whether we like it or not, we have to obey. We have to obey God and forgive, to surrender to Him, ask Him for His grace to forgive whoever that have caused us that pain. So now let's go back to Psalm 81 verse 10. Open your mouth wide with mighty decree. I will fill it now. You will see. The words that you speak, so shall it be. See, God will fill our mouth with His words. A prophetic word from the Lord gives solution or strategy to our situation. We may not be given the full picture because all of us only see in parts, but we are given enough to obey to make the prophetic degree. So by decreeing it, you are actually speaking solutions upon His authority and heaven will have to release the answer in His time. So partnership with heaven, with the intention of God's heart in mind, will overturn the plan of the enemy as we speak the word that align with the Father's heart for the situation it will affect what is here in the natural world and will overturn the impossibilities so friends we are living in such a time where there is just too many uncertainties you know we need to take the sword out of the sheath wield your sword don't put it aside don't put the word of God on the shelf always have the sword ready by your side ready for use you know we have to be connected at all times with the spirit of god through a lifestyle of worship and praying in the spirit so i want to encourage you to rise up and use that prophetic word that god has given to you because that's the now word for this season and declare it into your situation decree also god's promises over your life in Luke 1, 37, in the Passion Translation, not one promise of God is empty of power for all things. All things are possible with God. So don't be wary in making the decree. The enemy will always try to exhaust you, but continue to walk in his ways and decree his word while waiting patiently and expectantly for the breakthrough to come. To some the waiting period may take weeks or months, but to others, maybe years before we see the promise fulfilled. See, in the Bible, David was anointed as king while he was still a teenager, probably around the age of what, uh, 15 to 17 years old. But he became king only when he was 30 years of age. The journey he had to go through wasn't easy, as you all know the story here. Yeah? He was a hero uh, when he defeated Goliath but later had to run for years from King Saul, had to hide in Adulam cave with 400 stressful men, 
It took a good 13 to 15 years from the time he was anointed by Samuel to become the king of Israel. Another story was Joseph. Likewise, you know, he was around his mid teens, around 15 to 17 years of age, when he had the dream of the sun, the moon, and the stars all bowing down to him. His life journey seemed to go southwards after he had that dream. You know, he was betrayed by his brothers, sold as slave to Egypt, imprisoned for something he didn't do. As you all know, the story was also another 13 to 15 years later, when he was 30 years old, when his dream came true. He became the second in command to Pharaoh. You see, the way the world thinks is radically different from that of God's. His ways are much higher than our ways. See, we would expect that after being given the dream or being prophesied, you know, Joseph would go in the direction of becoming a prime minister, the path of rising in ranks in the government until he became one. But that wasn't the case. His life journey, which you know, looked like it went in the opposite direction to his dream, actually brought him closer to his destiny. See, the prison where he ended up in was in Egypt. So he spent a few years uh, there, not realizing it was only a step away from his destiny. So trust God, friends, for the great things that he's doing in our life, despite the temporary setbacks. Because wilderness is not our destiny. God has a divine purpose for all of us. So friends, really don't give up. For your breakthrough could be just a step away. Like Joseph, from prison to prime minister of Egypt. God can bring you out of your lowest point to your destiny. And don't allow the enemy to silence you. If he can silence you, then he's on his way in gaining a foothold in your life. You will not be able to exercise that authority that God has given to you. He's given us the authority to speak into, our, into the situations, to shift atmosphere, and to proclaim breakthroughs in our lives. In Luke 10, 19, the Passion Translation. I read to you, Now you understand that I have imparted to you all my authority to trample over his kingdom. You will trample upon every demon before you and overcome every power Satan possesses. Absolutely nothing will be able to harm you as you walk in this authority. Let me share what I received in the month of May. On May 6, God gave me a word uh, through a vision. I saw a scroll that has the word be still on it. See, there are many things I tried to do with my own strengths and ability, but the word be still kept coming back to me. There were also moments when I forgot to be still again and wanted to make a big decision myself. Then the word came to me again and reminded me to be still. I'm still learning in this area because you know, I'm by nature a doer. So I like to get things done and I try to fix situations. But God is teaching me to be still. So I finally surrendered the situations to God and be still. See, I want to obey God regardless of what I thought or felt I should do. I will continue to declare His word as I wait patiently and actively for the breakthrough to come. Maybe be still is, now, is the now word for some of you because God wants to fight your battle. If that is the word for you, do as He says because all you need to do is just to rest in the finished work of Christ. God loves you and me because we are His beloved children. So friends, don't give up on your prayers. As we patiently wait for the fulfillment of God's promise over our lives, be active in waiting. How can we be active in waiting? Active waiting means to walk in the Word, to be sober and be vigilant. Don't be dismayed, discouraged, or disheartened, but continue to live in a lifestyle of worship praying in the Spirit, have your sword ready at all times, and speak the word with a mighty decree. The word that you speak, so shall it be. Let me end with this scripture in Habakkuk 2.9. For the vision is yet for the appointed time. It hurries towards the goal of fulfillment. It will not fail, even though it delays. Wait patiently for it, because it will certainly come. It will not delay. Amen. God bless you.